Knowledge is power. And this is Powerful Stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. Now, let's fire up the news hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Welcome to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, coming to you live from the Waywalker Studios at Vegas All Net Radio. How y'all doing out there today? So, so uh, I'm here, your host Kurt Dukach. We have William Beach Baker, we have Michael McCullough, Hello. and Perry Haichu, and Lawrence behind the boards making us sound great. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so boy, uh, it's been a been a fun week. First, uh, we had our uh, fundraiser this last Saturday. It was uh, great. We had a lot of new faces there. Welcome to the welcome to the show. Welcome to our group, and welcome all of you. I mean, there was a really good turnout this Saturday for our, for our, for our potluck. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was talking to a lot of the new faces that I seen there, and most of them seem to get our information from the dispensaries here in Las Vegas. Yeah, isn't that so, great? Yeah. And that was St. Patrick's Day, uh, a, a green holiday for green people. And we had a lot of green, green food and a lot of wonderful food and uh, libations mm-hmm. on all patient event. We've had to go to patient events because our, our group is growing bigger and bigger and we're getting more and more patients. So we do have public events and we have patient events. Mm-hmm. So um, join weekend. And, and I think it's important to have those patient events because one of the problems that the implementation of this law had in the in the first 13, 14 years was by forcing patients not to be in a in a social environment of, of going to a dispensary, a pharmacy to get their meds, by forcing them to grow their own. And, and of course, even if they did, they were in legal jeopardy. It really had an isolating effect on, on a community. And... Um, if anything's worse than suffering from an illness, a chronic illness, it's suffering in isolation. Mm-hmm. And so it's great that uh, that we can is bringing these people together and is able to um, foster more of a sense of community, which makes us stronger. Right. Yep. And a lot, a lot of these people come to this are finding new friends, mm-hmm. friends that they can rely on when they need, friends that they don't have to be afraid. They don't have to hide in the closet. You know that I'm a medical marijuana patient to these people. Like mm-hmm. a, a lot of them, they're afraid to come out and let you know a majority of people know that these people they feel safe with Mm -hmm. you know because they're fellow patients so it it really there's a lot of people who still struggle with that because Mm of family issues or job issues or whatever it may be uh personal battles with their church maybe or whatever it may be there's a lot Mm -hmm. of people who are I want to say closet cannabis consumers yeah. who are just hiding terrified. in the cannabis closet. Yeah, hiding yeah. in the cannabis <laughs> closet, to put it in that kind of terminology, mm. and they're just absolutely terrified to tell the people they're close to about their. They don't want to be perceived as it being a habit, right. so mm. I don't think they really want to to let e- that. Even out. though a diabetic could have an insulin habit, or a cardiac patient could have a digitalis oh. habit, if we oh, put it that way, you know, uh, unfortunately there is that that public perception, which is really changing finally after all yep. this time, um, that if you use cannabis in in any way you are an addict it's part of how the police uh lay, levy charges on people on patients yeah. when they go yeah. in and grow them if there's a gun they charge them with nrs 202.360 which is unauthorized person in possession of a firearm it doesn't matter that they have a clean record doesn't matter that they're not driving while impaired or anything like that the the view of the authorities in that case is that because you are a legal medical user of marijuana you are an are addicted to it and therefore you are unauthorized by Nevada statute to have a gun and it's it's something that is has been fighting back and forth through the courts. Well, it's years. ridiculous you know every day that goes by I feel like the city gets a little bit more violent and I feel less and less able to defend myself because mm-hmm. of the medicine I've chosen to use mm-hmm. and uh, with what happened unfortunately in Belgium God rest those people's poor souls uh, you know they have the inability to defend themselves and my right to defend myself has been taken away purely because of the medicine I take and it's kind of it's ridiculous i would like to have that right restored because right now it leaves me the only option of open carrying right and open carrying is scary and mm. a lot of places won't let me in the building with it and i just don't really appreciate putting myself out there like that you know i'm not a law enforcement officer i don't like packing openly i like to just kind of silently quietly being able to defend myself i don't want to hang with you know my dick hanging out of my in pants, the, so in the speak. rare event that it were necessary of course and you yeah. just want to be and, that, and that's why you have insurance well, in the uh, rare event that you have an well, accident. Of course, you know, or a fire extinguisher, 
You know, there's all kinds sure. of preventative yeah, steps that you take in your home to try to defend right. yourself. And I don't want to get off on too much of a tangent, but still, it's just like, you know, there are so many nitpicky issues surrounding this, and the new marijuana industry has opened so many doors where it used to shut so many doors, but still we work through these individual problems. Yeah, and the, and the problem in this specific case, especially when you're dealing with patients, is that um, for years now the federal government has placed a very strong focus on gun crimes and gun right. and any sort of pharmaceutical or, or any, any sort of drug together with guns is is a really bad thing and adds a five-year enhancement to any sentence that someone would would serve on a federal mm -hmm. term and there's mandatory sentencing involved with some of these right. some of Absolutely. these cases I'm sure which kind of takes away from the judge and jury's ability to kind of distinguish individual case right. cases there they're just kind of have their hand forced unfortunately by right. policies mm -hmm. that were <laughs> put into place well before well, that's interesting. Issue. That's interesting that you bring up guns and marijuana. Sort of leads into our first story of our local celebrity mm -hmm. favorite friend, uh, Chum Lee, <laughs> who got into a little yeah. trouble because of uh, marijuana. He said, uh, he, you know, Pawn Star celebrity Austin Lee Russell, better known as Chum Lee, remains under the microscope following his arrest last week in, the, in Southwest Las Vegas home. Uh, Chum Lee had... Uh, uh, got into some trouble, I guess, with a young lady, and uh, police decided to issue a warrant and went to his house, and uh, they searched his house. They opened his vault. I don't know why they would do that, but they opened his vault, and they found four ounces of marijuana. Mm -hmm. And, of course, he had told them before they did that that he smoked a lot of pot, you know, mm -hmm. and they found some guns, and, of course, now he's a big bad boy, mm -hmm. you know. And it cost him a $62,000 uh, bail, so he's out on bail. And uh, we wish you luck, Chun Lee, uh, because uh, well. we feel as patients, maybe you ought to think about being a patient, because uh, usually a chronic patient smokes about four months of bud a, a month, so you must have some aches and pains, buddy. Mm -hmm. And I think we can can help you. Oh, so, I just uh, Chun Lee, uh, gee whiz, get rid of the guns, man, if get you're going to smoke pot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he had yeah, a lot well, of yes. stuff going on yeah. there. He, and you know, um, Chum Lee, we would appreciate you uh, giving us a call. We want you to be on our show, and we want you <laughs> to come and talk to. I think that guy's America got a lot of. Las Vegas he's got a lot live. of. A lot of demons. Some yeah, issues I, he's yeah. got to deal with. But we still love yeah. you. I, sure. I can say in general. Um, I don't have a whole lot of use for reality stars, uh, people who are just, you know, just like us, but just happen to be in a, in a right place and, and, you know, all of a sudden this instant celebrity. But in, the, in that very essence, people who happen to be just like us but are, are in that public spotlight, what is, has happened to him is no different than what has happened to thousands of other yeah, people in Nevada I mean. and, and hundreds of thousands across right. the country every year. Mm -hmm. And Chum Lee, what a great spokesman you could be for Nevada and America. Um, get a hold of us. We can, 702.org. Thank you. Yeah. And, and okay. Uh, okay. a couple other things uh, on the local end. We've had some changes in our card program uh, okay. in the last Tell week. Tell me about that. Last. I yeah. about that. Yeah. making things a little bit easier for our patients. You think so? Yeah, well, well. For easier in, in, for certain patients because now you can get your, your application for your medical marijuana card online. So wow. you, you don't have to mail in the $25 and wait the 7 to 14 days till you actually get the application to take it to a doctor. But you do have to either, you have to photocopy the back of your driver's license with that kind of that, that barcode-y bar 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 looking thing they have. And you have to, you have to uh, email that to them. And then they, they, can, they can send you a packet from that. So okay. it, it makes it easier for most of us, but we do have some patients out there that don't have computers and that don't have scanners and mm, that don't have true. printers. I mean, I run yeah. into it daily. I, I have to mail applications out to a lot of these patients because mm. they're not in the greatest financial things. Mm. But, but it does make it easier for a majority of us. So it is a step forward. So congratulations, but, State. We're very but, happy you're trying to make this easier for us. So, yeah. And one other change they made okay. was the approval letter that you received from the from – the, uh, from Carson City itself after you've been approved and it says take this down to the DMV to go get your your license mm -hmm. made and when you go to the DMV they give you a temporary ID and then it takes seven to ten days for them to mail your actual ID that letter that they mail you that approval letter is now good for 60 days from the day it was sent um, so you have two months now 
to actually get down into the DMV instead of before it was just what seven or ten days they gave us. Right. Yes. Yeah, seven or ten days. Right. So it was like once you got your card, you had to hurry up and get down to the DMV, right. or you would lose the access to your right. medicine. Yeah, but that letter does not give you the ability to go into a dispensary and purchase medical cannabis. It does it, now. It does, it does now, now for sixty change. days. Yes. Yes. Okay, because it, I thought it was the card only. It no. was. Yeah. It was. It was, and you could use the approval letter for. It was either seven or ten days mm -hmm. that. They would allow until you got that either that temporary card from the DMV or the actual card from the DMV. Right. Right. Um, now that letter it has the date it was mailed. It's good for 60 days from that date. So you, so you, so those patients we don't have to rush down to the DMV because a lot of uh, a lot of us have busy schedules. We have doctor's right. appointments we have to get to. We have we have work. We have a lot of things. And for for them to say. Here, here, you're approved. You have 10 days to get down to the DMV and get your card, or you lose access to your medicine. Right. Well, what's interesting <laughs> about that is, uh, as you may or may not know out there in, in Radio Land, is that um, you have to go to certain DMV offices, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. only the director and the assistant director can process your card. So uh, if you're in Pahrump, you have to drive all the way to Durango or wherever, mm -hmm. to you know, which is quite... You know, you might have to take half the day off of work to do mm -hmm. that. Sure. Uh, and and the DMV here right now is quite a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, there are lines for, well, for hours and hours and hours. They're trying, they're hours trying and, to clear it know. up for patients because, like, when you go in as a patient, yeah. you get to go through the handicap line. And I heard yeah, you can a rumor that. on TV the other day that the DMV is going to start accepting uh, appointments. Start yeah. Again, very, very yeah. Serious. Again, right. yeah. They, yeah. They, they, they tried and this they before, it. and it didn't work yeah. too good. Yeah. So, because uh, people wouldn't show up. Maybe yeah. they'd make yeah. the appointments and then not show up. Yeah, but, you know, it, you trust the post. And they people. weren't even yeah. yeah, they're not medical patients. So that's <laughs> that's <laughs> just the everybody looking to drive. Uh, <laughs> government bureaucracy <laughs> at work, you know. Yeah, it... it <laughs> I, I'm thrilled, uh, as are we all, that we've been working in this for years and that the state is finally making these uh, small steps in, in catering to the, the needs uh, of the patients. But it's a damn shame that it's taken so many years that we've been badgering the state to do exactly this sort of thing that, it, that it's finally happened. So, well, yes, yeah. bravo that it's happened, but... Damn, right. what to, be very so to be very frank, <laughs> well, you know, they're not responsible. You know, there's no transparency, Michael. Well, to be uh, fair, so they've exempted themselves, right? I mean, and it's still in the news. We talked about it last week about the uh, legislators uh, basically saying that they're not going to turn over their emails to the Associated mm -hmm. Press or anybody or or whatever. And, and you know, they they live a double standard. They don't have the transparency that uh, the regular American people have. But now, what's happening is the politicians are hearing it from it from their constituents here in Nevada. And uh, they're starting to change their tune and saying, well, maybe we should revisit this. Mm -hmm. Right? What do you got to say, Michael? Well, you know, you handed me this story just a few minutes before we went on, and I got righteously outraged about it because, no, you, you shouldn't be hiding these things from the public. Yet, um, I do see that uh, there is a an, an opposing viewpoint in that uh, quite often if someone is writing a, a private citizen is writing a, an email or a letter to a public official to request help, they will divulge personal details, very, uh, you know, things that, that they might not want to share with the community, but they're trying to, to get help because they're desperate. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think that it necessarily serves the best public interest for all of those emails to become in the public domain. I disagree with you because here, guess here's how it really works in the real world. Mm -hmm. Fifty-one years in politics, I can tell you uh, that what they do is if you get a government report that has certain things they don't want you to tell you, they black it. They out. redact it. Yeah, <laughs> it's that sure. simple. Mm -hmm. And they would do the same thing. Obviously, personal emails are a whole different thing when a when a constituent is writing about their cancer mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we respect that, and uh, and the news media and everyone's going to respect that. Right. You know, because they, well, they've been doing that. For, I, I, I don't they've know. been blasting There's this all, crap out you know, for a long time. Let TMZ me tell you. To Gawker and, um, to the, the, you know, you're always going to have people sun, yapping and bitching yeah. about it, Michael. But the truth is. Uh, we we deserve transparency. We we deserve our legislators. We need to know what they're going doing through going on and and uh, how the bills are being paid and everything else. Mm -hmm. And there's just a, too much of that crap. You know. I I agree that we want transparency. No, Yet at the same time, uh, we shouldn't uh, make it easy for 
very personal people to have those personal stories. Well, we're not going in. to. We're going to find and, ways and, to you know, if you too. redact things, yeah. then there are people going to say out there, well, why have you redacted these names? We have yeah. a right to know this. And, right. you know, where do you draw the line? The, the problem is this is, is hardly a black and white issue. And it yeah, is but more in, gray than I In than 80 either. years of prohibition, we've mm -hmm. learned one thing. They don't give a damn what we say or ask for. They're well, going to do what they want to do. I was just going to say, you know, okay? to circle so, back. Uh, and we are the people. We are in charge, believe it or not. And we need to take you charge. You sound of like a Bernie Sanders <laughs> man. No, you know, I'm, I'm a libertarian <laughs> Republican, and I've been all my life. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, that's, and, and you're very libertarian. And sure. we're all kind of in there. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, we're just sick and tired of it. For yes. all different reasons. Yes. But we're all sick and tired of it. Yes. Well, look, everyone's yes. sick and tired okay. of it, and the only reason why these changes are happening so quickly is because there's vested business entities yeah. putting their feet to the yeah. fire on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we've it's been barking for decades, and they're like, you know, we don't care right. about what you say, and now all of a sudden, they're like, oh, we got to do this for the patients. Right. And it's just like, well, you don't it, give a the, shit about the patients. The you never, if you, if you gave a shit about the law. patients, you wouldn't tax them to death for their medicine. You yeah. wouldn't charge them up the ass and, for their and, fucking and, cards. And it is true. The reason, the reason they're moving on making these card things faster and uh, the 60-day the, the approval instead of the, the week or whatever it was is because it's, it's because patients are losing access to their medicine, mm -hmm. but also... The businesses were losing access to those patients. Well, of course, right. so, exactly that too. So look, I mean, I'm, it, I'm, it, it don't get me wrong. Yeah, point, a win's so. a win. I'll take mm -hmm. the win. But for Christ, right. you know, I'm just being honest about what the mm -hmm. what the motives are here. Right. Yeah, there's yeah. no philanthropic oh, yeah. love I, shown I, here. I, no. I, for one, I, I am thankful that these business owners are are backing us and putting money oh, yeah. this and and, oh, yeah. and going up there and yelling at you know yelling the same things we've been yelling because now they're actually listening to it. And right. you know, as long as these people aren't out here trying to gouge us as patients and you know take advantage of us as patients which right. i haven't seen any of that yet um I'm 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 behind them 100. percent I mean, absolutely. Yeah, we got to use the resources we have, and right now that's that's a oh, huge absolutely. resource. Oh, absolutely. Like I said, yeah. a win's a win, and I'm all right. for it. But Man. you know, yeah, and that's what uh, what weekend's all about. We've been having these workshops, mm -hmm. and we're trying to learn and teach others to speak in one voice. And I got to say, the dispensaries and the cultivators and everybody for the last year has really come pretty close together. You know, and I I am proud of them, you know, and. Um, I've been using dispensaries myself. I have to admit, they're, they're they have some incredible, wonderful products, mm -hmm. and um, I see people from all over the world in those places. You know, mm -hmm. so reciprocity must be working. And if you're a patient and you're in Michigan right now and you're watching this show, you can come. And you're a patient. You can bring your license here and come to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. if you're in Maine, you can come here. If you're from Guam, you can come here. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you can come here from 23 states and all the territories. Mm -hmm. In actuality, you can come here from all 50 states and any territory or any place on the planet, and we can get you. Uh, uh, your medical marijuana pro product somehow, there are, some way. Well, yeah, now, the, now, 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 that, now there's can. actual services that are right. for out of state. It doesn't it does not have to be a medical marijuana state right. or anything like that. But if you're from out of state and you're in our state and you want to try marijuana, there are places now that can get you a doctor's recommendation. And that is good in our dispensaries right. as long with as the out of state with license your out of state license or U.S. passport. Yeah, and right. so I, I don't know that we can actually uh, say that uh, foreign nationals would be able to take advantage of this I, because well, I understand yeah, it's well, a U.S. Because, passport. Okay, for example, in California, you works. don't have to be a resident to be a patient. Mm -hmm. If, say, for instance, you had a California medical marijuana license, you could mm -hmm. be from Bangladesh. You're sick. You need this medicine. The doctor writes you a script. That script is good in California. You come across the border into beautiful Las, suburban L.A., Las Vegas, mm -hmm. Nevada. Because you've and, already got your California recommendation. And yes. guess what? Sounds possible. Reciprocity. Reciprocity. Yeah, we don't care that you're from Bangladesh. And you can get you your medicine here mm -hmm. at our dispensaries. And it's the highest quality medicine, better than Colorado's, I'm sorry, because it's safer. Uh, it's just a lot more natural. There's a lot less chemicals. Uh, there's no uh, the testing free, regime is yeah, much more stringent. It, yeah, it definitely is, and uh, we're building a good product. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no we're building doubt. a good product. Yeah. I have to say, I'm impressed. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, okay. well, that's about time for us to take our first break. So we're going to take a little break here and uh, listen to these words from our sponsors. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Well, as, as that sound indicates, it's time for our It's 420 Somewhere moment. 
<laughs> so because it would be 420 on the mountain time zone correct no doubt in colorado in colorado and that so so today uh for those of you new listeners out there we usually come back at around 420 and we honor somebody in the movement uh this time it's uh we're gonna honor honor cindy may meehan for those of you who don't know, she was a 13-year-old medical marijuana advocate, and we recently just lost her. Um, she was in. She's originally from Connecticut, uh, and they moved. Or her and her parents moved to Maine to get access to medical marijuana to re, to treat a rare form of epilepsy. So, uh, her funeral uh, last Thursday was followed by a Native American burial at Fort Shantuck Burial Ground on Mohican pro- property. Connecticut doesn't allow pediatric medical marijuana use, so her mother moved her to Maine to get access to medical marijuana to treat the girl's frequent seizures. She and her family became medical marijuana advocates. Uh, family friend Brian Burton, an advocate from Maine, children, Maine Children for Cannabis Therapy, says her plight opened so many eyes. So this is a oh. tragic end to another one of these stories where parents want access to this medicine and their state won't allow them Mm -hmm. and they end up uprooting their their lives you know their friends lives you know because it's not easy when a friend moves away and you know family member moves away and and when they're doing it for medical reasons it makes it that much harder you know it these these i'm sure she could have benefited from her immediate family being closer to her than having to move to Mm -hmm. maine absolutely so Mm -hmm. you know so cindy may you know thank you for what you did right and hopefully we don't have any more stories like this right so very very sad yeah so any how about some fun stuff some fun stuff okay what's going on in sports i mean there's all kinds of cool shit happening in the nba and the nfl right now and yeah well we you know yeah the we just had a nfl player donate ten thousand dollars to medical marijuana research and uh He's also uh, he's uh, also looking for other players and the NFL themselves to come out and donate in in uh, matches funds matches funds yeah mm, wow. so who is he yeah okay well traumatic brain injury is is very yeah. real and it's something that the NFL uh, and before that the AFL as well uh, tried to downplay and tried to say it was was oh it's all in your head well it literally was but not in the way that they were saying right and you know you can see uh across sports from football to boxing and and a number of others that have this problem and it's something that does need to be addressed and the only reason that it is being addressed now is because people from the players to their fans to their families have just said enough is enough mm-hmm. we have to we have to address these issues and it in every aspect of of medicine we are seeing this old cannabis stoner prohibition mindset mm-hmm. evolving and moving forward on science and right. it's about damn time yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah the player the player was uh eugene monroe from the baltimore ravens okay right so, yeah yeah so. Well, so kinda, good going, yeah. Eugene. Thank you. I mean, That's right. Well, you know, it takes a lot of guts to put yourself yeah. out there like that, knowing damn well that the league does not approve of, you know, marijuana use and things like that. He's right. obviously telling them, you know, hey, I'm a supporter of this, and I'm mm-hmm. calling you out in public. Right. You yeah. know, I can be sure. I mean, whether he smokes or not, you know, maybe he doesn't, and he's just a supporter. But, right. you know, he's also potentially, depending on his recreational habits, putting his multimillion-dollar career Right. Here, you look what happened to Michael Phelps uh, endorsements a few years ago when mm-hmm. a, when a photo came out of him ripping a bong. Ricky Williams from the Miami Dolphins was one right. of the best running backs there ever was, and he just got so fed up of okay, he just like I want to smoke weed in the off season, mm-hmm. and they're like, no, you, you're a doper, you can't do that, and he's just like, I'll just retire the hell with it. Mm-hmm. So he finally just gave up the thing that he was, mm-hmm. you know, the man who was better at something than I'll most likely ever be in my entire life at anything, mm-hmm. had to give up what he is best at because. A group of people who most likely don't even play football decided that he wasn't allowed to because of his medicinal recreational choices. Because they said cannabis is a performance enhancing drug. Whatever the hell they said. You know, and, and I could point to there was a guy in the Olympics, a yeah. snowboarder, who got his gold medal taken away yeah. a couple decades ago because yeah. of it. A guy yeah. who won the Iditarod a while back, they tried to uh, take it away from him, and he was just like, well, right. you know, that means I just beat all of you and I was a stone. So, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, you know, yeah. I kind of see the NFL and the uh, the veterans kind of in a similar situation with PTSD, mm-hmm. because uh, 
you know, they're about to lose a lot of good people and maybe get sued and who knows what else. I mean, and they've got to take this serious. Well, you know? there was a kind of scary statement that was made by a former women's bantamweight UFC champion Ronda Rousey was giving an interview one of her fights got moved from Las Vegas to Australia at the last minute because of like a scheduling conflict the MGM needed their event they you know they some, something happened but anyway Australia was happy to take the gig and they were asking her they're like well you've been training in Vegas this whole time how do you feel about it being in Australia on such short notice and she's like oh well to hell with Vegas I I don't even like to fight there and they're like, well, what do you mean? Everyone fights in Vegas. They're like, the UFC tells us where to fight. If the fighters had their choice, they would not fight in Vegas because of the overly aggressive tactics of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Hmm. And there are a couple of other high-profile UFC athletes who have followed or echoed that concern. And my fear is that if they don't lax up eventually, there's going to be a lot of the top-tier talent that will openly not want to fight here. And that's bad for business. And I don't care what people say, you know, they're here to protect fighters, this, that, and the other. The job of those people is to ensure that this town continues to do good business. Wow. And if yeah. they can't yeah. do that, then we need to find people who know yeah. how to do business in this town. Yeah. And if they're scaring our top talent away, that's, you need to, you got to go. Right. So that's right. that's where I'm at with it. Without disagreeing with you, I would I would think that they would say that they were more concerned with um, protecting and promoting the integrity of the sport. And somehow to them, uh, integrity of the sport means that if people need to treat their aches and pains after their performance in a perfectly safe and non-toxic way, that they can't do it. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, very, yeah. very disappointing. You know, we yeah. could go into it all day, but yeah, you know, yeah. The, the sports, yeah. various sports entities. And I don't think, honestly, the UFC is the bad... Uh, the bad guy here. I mm -hmm. think if they had their way, they would allow their fighters to do what they wanted to an extent, because mm -hmm. of you know obviously the la their very lax um, drug testing policies over the past mm -hmm. few years and things like that. You know they've, they've let a lot of stuff slide. Hell, a guy named Michael Bisbing almost got his eye dislocated by a guy who was on steroids, and they barely gave him a suspension compared to Nate Diaz, who almost got five years for smoking grass. Yeah. So you know wow. these are the issues that are coming up in the sports. So, so, and so, it's so. not only sports. You're, you're mentioning steroids. Um, it, there is plenty of anecdotal evidence that law enforcement agencies across the country are dealing with this problem themselves, where you have uh, police officers uh, or, or other law enforcement agents who are using steroids. Themselves. Oh, absolutely, with no repercussions whatsoever, right. regardless of the fact that it causes, you know, aggression and, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, and I... <laughs> It's yeah. kind of like, I heard someone put it to me this way. I had someone ask me, they say, how do you know if someone's on steroids? And I say, well, it's kind of like if someone's on hard drugs. If you look at them and you think that they probably are, there's a good chance that they probably are. <laughs> and it's really almost as simple as that. Uh, I was reading an article we on the Fox 5 that. website today. <laughs> Though, of course, you don't know, but, you know, people assume and we all judge. Mm -hmm. So, and okay. you know, if someone's that vascular, it's not natural. But anyway, so I was right. reading the first Or they grow that much in yeah. such a short Point time. I was, um, <laughs> I, was, I was reading a Fox 5 article about Toronto Rob Ford, who was, you know, caught mm -hmm. smoking crack on video and things yeah. like that, and he passed away today or yesterday. Yes, yes. And uh, my comment was, you know, we should we should have hair follicle drug tests for all elected officials. Yeah. If we have to get drug tested for a job at wherever the hell, the people who are representing us should be clear of mind also. Does that include piss test and things no, like no, that? No, hair follicle, baby, just like us. Just hair. Oh, yeah, hair follicle, all the way down to the root. Right. Let's, see, let's see what these Well, what certainly these many of these, these legislators that you're talking about have across the country uh, in diff different jurisdictions passed legislation saying that anyone who's going to be on public assistance, welfare, food stamps, or whatever, has to take drug oh, tests. Oh, what about that? And, and the thing is that, well. that the people who have actually tested positive for drugs, who are on financial assistance, was so low as to as to not make it remotely worth the expenditure of public monies right. to go out and chasing right. after these right. people. Of course, of course. Right. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like Wait, voter fraud right. laws right. where oh. where the actual case of, you know, so, me going to a voting station and, and voting and then going to another one and pretending to be somebody else, it's right. insane. It, it, right. it just does not happen. <laughs> well, Kurt, what does the uh, CDC think about I this? I don't know. Well, I, I worked against ACORN in the 20... Uh, in the McCain-Palin election, and those people were all 
straight convicted felons, bullying people into registering Democrat. They ended up going to prison for it. They were illegally registering people on a daily basis. Uh, it was caught on camera. Voter fraud happens all all the time. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, yeah. I, I saw a oh. list of things where it's not racist to have an ID that you needed, including applying for welfare, getting Social Security, you know, applying for Section Eight housing, or you know, this or that, getting a food, getting uh, you know, entering a casino, or buying alcohol, or buying cigarettes, mm. or uh, this or that or the other. But the only thing where it's racist to have an ID is when you have to have an ID to vote to make sure that people who should be voting and shouldn't be voting are actually voting. So, you know, mm. that's crazy to me, but, you know, that's just another... That's I, I would respectfully su suggest that, you know, in defense of those uh, convicted felons that you spoke about, uh, the reason we have so many of them is because we have so many insane laws on the books, especially on a federal level, where to the point where the average citizen two or three times a day is convicting a, is is committing a federal felony of some sort or oh, another absolutely. and so uh, you know sure. uh, one reason that uh, that perhaps uh, Acorn may have had so many uh, convicted felons is because we have so damn many of them in the country oh, no. and we and they have so few options right. for employment and so if you have a group like that who is willing to say you've paid your debt to society and move along and and we'll give you an opportunity to rejoin with a job that 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 shouldn't be twisted into a bad thing just on itself the other it, the other things that you're talking about could easily take up yeah, more than was, the whole program it was all good until they you know, registered tony romo as a democrat to vote in las vegas nevada and the rest of the dallas cowboys along with a bunch of right, other people right. which is i mean review <clears throat> journal if you want to google it and all that but still yeah. it's just like you know we do need to unwind some of these draconian uh drug possession laws so that we don't have the revolving door and, and it's not and just like that. and it's not just drug possession it's it's across the whole federal panoply of of laws i mean you can go in i mean there there's this whole clive and bundy thing working right working out in in whatever direction and that's just representative to show that the this intrusion uh is more than just medical cannabis or more than just drug use in general sure. it's it's endemic across our our legislative code yeah. yeah. Well, we had we had some big news coming out of the CDC this week too. The Centers for Disease mm -hmm. uh, Control they uh, published their guideline for prescribing opiates opioids for chronic pain in the United States for 2016. Mm. And as we all know, a lot of the people who use medical cannabis are on it for chronic pain. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's it's, it's yeah. be, And a lot of them are former opiate yeah, patients. former or mm -hmm. some of them are still using Current, it. But they're using the, the, the cannabis. Less to right. wean them off or to supplement some of the opiates they're taking so they don't right. have to take as many of these mm -hmm. opiates. Right. So, But on March 18th, it was a, a statement of discouragement of urine testing for THC, uh, the psychoactive component of marijuana, and a warning against terminating treatment of patients for having positive results on urine drug tests. A warning wow. against terminating treatment to whom? Are we talking about to, to, to the VA or to, this is the to, pe center, using, to people general, using right. opiates uh, for chronic right. pain overall? This is right. This is the Center doctors. for Disease Control. Yeah, the the for so what does this actually mean? Is making a recommendation to, to do this? Okay, it's not is a there law. Any legal authority behind that, or is it just a memo? This is a federal memo. It's a federal yeah. memo, and it is a guideline that they they would hope that. All doctors and yeah. physicians. And generally would, speaking, it's a guideline. It, so legal authority, no. Generally no. speaking, it goes up the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So they uh, they advise physicians involved in opioid therapies to continue using urine testing to identify prescribed substances and undisclosed use. The document itself advises a cautious approach to urine testing from both a reliability and a financial st uh, standpoint. They did some studies on this, and they found that 21 percent of positive uh, tests for marijuana produced a false positive report. The test was also wrong 21% of the time when marijuana was not detected in urine samples. Hmm. So if, if you tested positive, there was a 21% chance it was wrong. So and one if you in tested five. negative, there was yeah. a 21% chance yeah. it was wrong. Yeah, <laughs> one in five people. My goodness gracious. <laughs> and this, and these weird. are the standards we hold that, people's that careers yeah. Yeah. by. Right yeah. here at this <laughs> board are, are, are going to be screwed. <laughs> Well, yeah, one yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Michael, you're going to jail. Uh, yeah, yes, okay. <laughs> one of us five people. Oh, yeah, man. so yeah, so these are the standards. I mean, they were yeah. taking these tests, and they were taking people 
who were were using <coughs> cannabis to try to maybe take away, get off of the opioids mm -hmm. and kicking yeah. them off the opioids, and then they were probably kicking people off the opioids who didn't even try it. Is what this means? Yeah, I mean, it happens all the time. Yeah. And, and I personally ran into that in the years that I was helping patients in, in this state that I ran across a number of people who were former opioid users who were using cannabis to wean them off of that process and right. to prevent them from right. doing it. So, so it, it is clearly a case of lesser harm of a, of a non-toxic substance versus uh, opioids, which, you know, if, if you take a pill too many, uh, you know, yeah. and, or, or if, if you happen to have a couple of drinks and you pop a couple of these, well, it can yeah. absolutely be legal. Um, I just oh. seen an ad for uh, the Great American Smokeout. Mm -hmm. I don't smoke cigarettes, okay? I quit with laser 10 years ago, 20 minutes. I haven't smoked in 10 years. But uh, I have to tell you that medical marijuana, cannabis, also helps you quit smoking cigarettes. I've heard that before. From and, lots of and I know that. I know that helps to be a fact. Helps you stop drinking alcohol. And, and, um, and it's certainly a lot better for you. So uh, the Great American Smokeout, you can smoke up. Uh, 420 medical marijuana if you want, if, if you feel that you really need to have something to suck on. Okay? And so um, talk to your doctor about that. Make sure it's safe mm -hmm. to do that and get a prescription and uh, come to Las Vegas and enjoy <laughs> reciprocity with us. All right? <laughs> yep. But uh, is, speaking of uh, people in the news and interesting, uh, in Nevada, this one might interest you, Michael, I kind of like this one. He's a, running as a libertarian. Uh, brothel owner Dennis Hoff is going to run for an assembly seat. That's our state <laughs> house of representatives here in Nevada for those who live in Linda Linda. Um, brothel owner Dennis Hoff filed to run as a libertarian in rural Nevada assembly district. The Nevada Secretary of State says the star of the HBO series Cat House filed paperwork Friday More in reality City stars. to run yep. for the Assembly District 36. It's held by a Republican, uh, James uh, Oscar Guerin, and uh, he's been there a long time. You may remember that uh, the Dennis's, uh, some of his uh, employees, the young mm -hmm. ladies there, uh, they had a Hookers for Hillary campaign. <laughs> going on and uh, now Dennis is going to run for the legislature and uh, I don't know if that's good luck or whatever how he feels about medical marijuana but Dennis well uh, I, I was going to ask how does this story the how does this story relate to anything to do with with medical marijuana well you know he's always been a pretty liberal guy and mm -hmm. I'm just uh, I'm just thinking well it, you know he's in Nye County right and we just opened a new dispensary there last weekend mm -hmm. and Nye County is very pro marijuana and uh, Dennis I'd like to hear what you got to say about that and uh, yeah. I think a lot of people maybe would maybe be interested. we should maybe we should reach out to him and see what his stance is on <laughs> yeah. it I mean he really? seems like a pretty liberal guy I mean he runs a well of course well, <laughs> I, mean, you're what he does for a <laughs> and, uh, I think that'd be a good <laughs> assignment I, for I you was just buddy. Say, the the laws in the state pro prohibit consumption of, um, of of cannabis in any MME uh, facility, but in a in a private facility like would be at one of those bunny ranches or chicken ranches, um, I'm sure he could offer a a patient friendly. Package. Well, I don't know uh, about that because if you remember, it wasn't, I can't remember the football stars uh, that recently got into trouble and passed out mm -hmm. in one of his Lamar brothels a few yeah, weeks ago. That, that wasn't about that. And, and he was smoking pot. Yeah, well, but there were other one of the big issues that they. Yeah, that yeah, was many, a big yeah, issue. The pot didn't cause him to go into a coma for a month. Right. We, we knew he had other medical problems because marijuana doesn't do those things to you. But, right. but nonetheless, you know, mm -hmm. obviously it was allowed or somebody allowed yes. it there. You know. Yes. Well, if you're so paying that's why I think he may be sympathetic. Do what you want. in Nye County. Well, I would I would assume once you go maybe not in the front lounge areas that they have, but once you go into that room, isn't that that would be a private room? And the law says that you can consume as a patient as long as it's out of public sight right. yeah, exactly so, and that's what I'm thinking in a private place like that I, Dennis uh, get a hold of us I'd like to hear from you and Mike if you want to interview him you're more than welcome oh good I, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad We'd you're not sending on me show. off on a research assignment here <laughs> yeah see how we do it folks we just get him on the spot and we make him do a do uh, the job okay where's the budget on this <laughs> <laughs> all righty well, uh, what's this charge on my card I think it's about ready, time for our second break uh, all right we'll be right and we'll be right back you're listening
listening to the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Now, here again, the Weekend Radio Team. Welcome back to Nevada Cannabis News, coming to you live from the Way Walker Studios at Vegas All Net Radio. So, <laughs> so yeah, so, wow, we have some, some other great news. What? The Supreme Court? Yes, the Supreme Court uh, has thrown out a lawsuit uh, against um, Colorado that was filed by the Attorney Generals of um, Nebraska and Oklahoma. Uh, they argued that uh, what, Obama, what uh, Colorado was doing was violating federal law and they were getting the spillover effect of smuggling uh, through their own states. And uh, the Supreme Court declined to hear this. And and uh, although two conservative justices, Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito, said that they would have heard the he case, and I think they would not have done that if they weren't looking to make a change with it. Of uh, but overall, the Supreme Court did decline to hear this, and, and that's a good thing. I mean, Colorado stands by its law because they've noted that the Obama administration has indicated that the federal government lacks the resources and inclination to enforce fully the federal medical, uh, the federal marijuana ban. Mm -hmm. uh, the, Colorado also said that the Supreme Court was not the proper place to resolve this. The lawsuit by Oklahoma and Nevada was filed under the court's rarely used original jurisdiction doctrine, which covers instances in which the justices hear disputes between the states that are not first reviewed by the lower courts. So mm. what the court is saying here is not that it's improper for them to hear this subject matter in general, but that Nebraska and um, Oklahoma had not gone ahead and sued at a lower level Mm -hmm. of federal district court because yeah. the United States Supreme Court uh, does not, is, is not the court of first and last recourse right. simultaneously. Although, you know, they unless do have the option to do that and they did choose to listen and do and they went back to basically yeah, their own. This order. should be sending a right. message to people who right. might be thinking about doing other similar things. You got to go through the circuit courts right. and mm -hmm. things like that. Absolutely. You know what? There's a district court, then circuit the court, court appeals, is, exactly, and well, then from there to the Supreme Court. Yes. And okay. Yeah. That's why they so call it an uphill taken, battle. Right. Well, this should have right. taken years and years, but yeah. it kind of came rather quickly. Right. And but it did, and, it, and it's good it happened that way because because Oklahoma and Nebraska essentially were trying to implement uh, an emergency right. hearing on this because. Because they said, "Oh my God, the pot-eyed zombies are coming over every day, right. and they're they're ruining the quality of life right. for our for our good hard work right. and God fearing Okies." In, in so. politics, you call it a border war, mm -hmm. and when two or three states team up or more, mm -hmm. then um, it, it 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 goes up the ladder. And it went up the ladder in the Supreme Court. But it ended up in the Supreme Court. I, I've, I've got to really take the Obama administration to task here. They're, they're saying the federal government lacks the resources and incl inclination to enforce fully the federal marijuana ban. That's hmm. fine, but that does not leave the citizens with a clear-cut picture of what the government is going to do. He's been yeah. dancing around this since he oh. got in. I, well, well, he's been and, dancing and around before, something. And this but yeah. before, on, on, on this particular case and this particular issue, he came out and said right. that they, he, he came to the Supreme Court and said, don't even hear this. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Because yeah. this is ridiculous. Right. See, no so, lower you know, court's going to undo what the Supreme Court just did. I don't okay. think. So even well, if they try to the go article, back, they, I don't they've think they lost. They kicked it down to the lower court. I no, they, they didn't kick it, it down. But they technically could go back to the lower court, and mm -hmm. you can file a new brief. It, it was. Uh, yes. It was turned away in but an it's un not gonna unsigned opinion. Yeah. Is right. basically yeah. what they did. They they basically said we're not even going to we're not even going to hear what you have. No, they're not because it's a border war and it's settled. I mean, that's a great. No. I mean, if I if it I can close on it, I, I think that um, the, it's best described by Tom Angel, the uh, chairman of the Marijuana Majority, who said at the end of the day. If officials in Nebraska and Oklahoma are upset about how much time and resources their police are spending on marijuana cases, as they said in their briefs, well, then they should join Colorado in replacing prohibition with legalization Absolutely. and the regulation that comes da -da, with da -da. it. Da -da. And now instead of spending money right. to fight it, we're making right. money off of it. Yes. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, join the billion dollar industry. You yeah. know. Well, as a matter of fact, I, I've seen something in, in the past uh, week from Marijuana uh, Business Daily uh, that by 2020, this is expected to be a, a $40 billion 
industry right. mm-hmm. between yeah. the main uh, medical cannabis industry, cannabis industry, and the ancillary services, right. which are really the lion's short right. share of yeah. what any yeah. business. Arcview is making some you, bold that's projections. Really conservative. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, think, conservative I, I thought there estimate. were pretty bold projections from Arcview actually right. coming yeah. through with that. Yeah, Please. for sure. We don't yeah. really know what's going to happen. We have no idea to know how many states will actually legalize this November right. or not. We don't know what's going to happen with the poli- you know. There's usually rules in election years. Right. There are no rules this year. Right. Anything can happen. Right. We have no idea what's going to happen. As mm. much as I would like to say, oh, yeah, this is what's going to happen. And this is who's going to be president. And this, and this. If anything over the last six or seven months has shown us, you know, it is so unpredictable, wildly right. so. As much as the infamous they want to try to put the clamps on it, I mean, there, you know, we have no idea what the right. voter turnout might be in various jurisdictions or yeah. what the hell could happen. You know, as we saw once again, what happened in Belgium today, there's a lot of distractions out there. Mm. We're not really getting the word out right now about what's going, you know what I mean? Mm. Our bill in November or the initiative petition, like th- we haven't heard one word pro or against really in public. Right. It's just kind of there's so much going on right now. And and what you're saying about this being unpredictable, I, I think, is especially scary because the American people are unhappy with politics, as usual, both Democrats and Republicans, which is why populist candidates like Sanders or Trump mm-hmm. are, are, are having such a big response. But what really scares me uh, for reform in this area and for the country in general is that all it would take is one Brussels or Paris type incident mm. in the United States to lurch that electorate strongly to the right oh, and absolutely. wipe out a number of the gains that we've made in the past. I, 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 I hate to say it this no. way, but all of this fear, this uh, international terrorism just plays right into Trump's hands. Mm-hmm. As he beats mm-hmm. that war drum, people mm-hmm. just feed off of it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, I w- happened to be that his uh, this attack happened on a, on a primary day mm-hmm. for three or four states. Mm-hmm. Right. I would assume yeah. it'll play to him. You know, yeah, we'll see. It's, it's sad. They captured that one guy, and uh, and then every these people went nuts. You know, I mean, it's, well, it's they sad. had to speed it's up sad. what was going to happen because they yeah. thought they were going to get caught. How about a little yeah. bit of regional news. Well, I got a story okay. from Los Angeles that's kind of on the other side of the coin because this is some great news coming from the Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. This is not such good news coming from Los Angeles. An appeals court, a state appeals court, has upheld a judge's decision to block a smartphone application that allows people in Los Angeles to have medical marijuana delivered to your house. A division of the Second District Court of Appeals on Monday said the app by a company called Nestrop violated a 2013 voter-approved law that restricted medical marijuana facilities in the city. The three-judge panel said that the law, also known as Proposition D, also generally prohibits marijuana deliveries by vehicle. The panel upheld a lower court's decision to issue a preliminary injunction. A call to an attorney for Nestrop was not immediately returned. The company was sued in 2014 by the Los Angeles City Attorney, who sought to shut it down as a violation of Prop D. I worked in a Los Angeles dispensary before Prop D happened, and it was a lot of fun. We could kind of basically stay open whenever we wanted, do what we wanted. Uh, Prop D, you know, gives you very strict hours of operation, and you know, this, that, and the other. You know, no more consumption on premises because we used to have hash bars and yeah. all kinds of and all kinds of fun huh. stuff. And I'm not sure if uh, what, what's this company's name here. Uh, Nestrop. I'm not sure if they're the parent company to Weed Maps. I don't. I don't think they are. But this is just kind of a chink in that armor right. because forever, for all, the longest time since I can remember, uh, Weed Maps has been kind of untouchable. Mm-hmm. All these illegal jurisdictions, like nothing ever happened to them. And even just maybe a couple of weeks ago, did all the illegal Weed Maps delivery services disappear off of our mm-hmm. off of our it was radar? Supposed to be on the 15th. Mm-hmm. Okay. That was that was the agree- agreement terms that they agreed came to an agreement with mm-hmm. Nevada. Well, there you go, but wow. still, you know, they're this is a this is going to hurt their business for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not sure exactly how I feel about it because I I, I feel like if people have a business license and they're legal, they should be able to have a delivery right. service and advertise their their right. their services. I mean, Weed Maps has been a staple among that the community for for I don't know who's going to replace them. Yeah. Or if this is even weed maps, but yeah, if these the things go away, what happens then? The younger generation is really into Leafly, that kind of yeah. technology and delivery type of services and stuff. Oh, and, and, and these businesses, a lot of them are not allowed to put up billboards or mm-hmm. advertising or have commercials or neon signs and all kinds of things. So how do they get a hold of your customers electronically. But but that's not really what the, the heart of this of case is about right. because the appeals courts held a, uh, upheld an injunction against the pot delivery app. That right. means it, it's not the people who are actually selling cannabis or mm. delivering it. This is someone who is 
enabling that. And I'm sure the court's mm. argument is that you are enabling a, a federally illegal activity, but the other side of that is the First Amendment. When mm. you're providing knowledge, you're providing resource, and you may be taking commercial money in order to do it, mm -hmm. but you're not actually transferring that product. So I think that this is going to have a, ch a First Amendment challenge. Yeah. So you think this could go to a higher, higher oh, court, like absolutely. the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals sure. or something like that in San Francisco sure, and sure, see sure. where it goes from there? Yeah. Well, we'll be following this development, and I think Kurt has some announcements as we're winding down here. Yeah, we're yeah. just about out of time, so we're about that announcement time. Uh, first off, make sure you check out our sponsors, the people who make this show possible. Uh, Essence Vegas, Nevada Pure, Sahara Wellness. Check them out. Great medicine, great prices, and, you know, helping us bring this news to you. So, right. um, On our event side, with this weekend, we got our patient support group out, group out in Pahrump on Saturday the 26th at 2 p.m. We also have First Friday coming up next week on April 1st. So, uh, and then of course- April Fools. April for, Fools, right? First Friday, yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're out there behind the arts factory in that. Right. So, and then we have our, our big 420 party coming up out there in Boulder City on April 16th. Coming uh, soon. Yeah, well, I you mean, don't want to miss that. Get your it's, tickets. It's, it's, uh, bucks, it's, it's really advance. starting to roll. People are contacting me multiple times a day. I'm getting things now, so. Lots right. of vendors, great music. Yeah, right. great music, lots of right. vendors, good food. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to make uh, the St. Patrick's Day party look like a little drop in the bucket. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so uh, check all that out. If you want any information on what we're doing, make sure you go to our website, wecan702.org. And it has all of our events and all of the stuff that's happening here in Nevada in there and also some great news. So, Or you can reach us at 1-844-WECAN-LV. So... Thank you again. So, and we'll see yeah. you guys And next we'll week. see you on the radio. Yeah. Great Stay news. Careful. Come to Stay Las safe. Vegas. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.